Did you say army? Mira asked as he studied the list. Granny nodded. A team of 30 or so soldiers along with Veronica, Sabrina and Daphne stood behind her. The soldiers were a mixed lot, mostly Arthurian knights and merry men. Morgan Le Fay was there, as well as Hassan Boots and the Scarecrow. There were a few fairies that Sabrina had never met, each more obnoxious than the last, and a rather smelly banshee. All of the visitors were completely bewildered when they stepped through the mirror into the Hotel of Wonders and even more surprised when they went through another to enter the Hall of Wonders. Even Charming, whose own magic mirror was nothing short of incredible, was struck speechless. I had no idea, Mr. Seven said, marveling at the enormous hall. I never really get used to this place. Snow said, though she had once owned the mirror herself. I was shocked. Bunny described this mirror as a botched first attempt. Charming said, a botched first attempt? Mira cried. Charming ignored him. But I think it will serve our needs very well. We could house an army ten times our size here, plus the weapons. It might be wise to train in here too. There's plenty of space. Okay, everyone, let's get to work. Well, am I missing something? Mira asked. Granny handed Mira her massive key ring. My family has agreed to aid Prince Charmy's army with supplies and training. The list will tell you what they need. Mira looked skeptical. No Grim has ever gotten directly involved in the Ever After community in this manner. He can't just let this... This riffraff trapes in and out of here, taking whatever they like. No one cares about your opinion, Charmy said. Stepping up to Mira, you are a servant. Hurry along and get those doors opened. Billy Charmy, you're forgetting your manners, Granny cried. He's not a servant, he's a friend, Daphne said. Be nice. Child, this so-called friend of yours is not real. He is nothing more than a security system designed to look after this hall and to obey your every command. He only has a personality to make dealing with him a bit more pleasant. His stubbornness, however, is obviously a malfunction, one we should have Bunny take a look at right away. He is wasting valuable time. My troops need to train. Snow White stepped between the two men. Billy, Mira is a big part of this family and he is well respected. Plus, I can attest firsthand that he's a sweetheart. She turned to face Mira. Friend, we need your help. We're terribly outnumbered and these rooms have the magical firepower to help us put up a good fight against the Scar Hand. I personally promise that everything will be returned in perfect condition. But not even a scratch, Mira, she said. Mira looked down at the keys and the list. He glanced at Granny Rhoda one last time as if hoping she would come to her senses, but she just smiled. We really are in a bit of a rush, Granny said. Mira shrugged and shuffled off to do as he was told. Stop being mean to him! Daphne snatched the prince. Charming rolled his eyes. Veronica stepped forward. What can we do? Robin Hood smiled. Your family is essential to our success. Few members of our army have experience with enchanted objects. You're going to train us, or I feel we'll all turn each other into frogs. We'll be happy to help, Granny Rada said. The family spent the entire day instructing the Ever Afters in the proper use of magical gizmos. Sabrina did her best to help without actually touching anything, and so she eventually found herself giving flying carpet lessons. Its magic never seemed to arouse her addiction, so she tried her best to teach steering, landing, and acceleration. She was terrible at it. Nevertheless, the refugees treated her like a hero. They asked her millions of questions about her experiences. 
Everyone claimed to have heard one story or another about the sisters and was stunned to find out that most of them were true. Did you really kill a giant? What did the Jabberwocky sound like? Did ours really but kill a robot? Being the star should have been fun, but Sabrina couldn't help feeling like she was betraying her father of every new soldier she helped. Henry wouldn't even join them in the hall. Veronica guessed he was still in the courtyard sulking. Sabrina thought of all the times she had done the same rather than lend a hand, and for the first time she understood how annoying it could be. She was tempted to go give her dad a lecture about having a good attitude. She could recite by heart many of the ones Granny Rhoda had given her, but she doubted it would do any good. They never really worked on Sabrina either. While Sabrina flew around the hall on the carpet, Daphne became the go-to expert on many of the other gizmos. The little girl's neck with wands and rings made her very popular with the recruits. Sabrina couldn't help but watch her with a mix of pride and regret for having treated her like a baby for so long. It was clear Daphne was growing up. Granny Rhoda trained a band of merry men in the art of flicking a fairy godmother wand. It didn't come naturally to the burly men, whose weapons of choice were heavy clubs or bows and arrows. A wand required a delicate hand, and there was a lot of shouting when they couldn't get it quite right. And there was a lot of shouting when they couldn't. And there was a lot of shouting when they couldn't get it quite right. Little John got so frustrated that he punched a nearby marble pillar. Uncle Jake had more experience with magic than all the Grimms combined, especially when it came to enchanted creatures. He saddled unicorns and did his best to calm the nervous beasts. They were stubborn, dangerous animals. Elvis was frantic around them and hid behind Veronica when one trotted too close to him. Daphne the Despite the obvious physical and emotional pain he was in, Jake never took a break, nor did he speak to anyone. It was a long day. Most of the soldiers were hopelessly inept, and a few were already showing signs of magical addiction. There were far too many ever afters to teach, and not enough time to, for anyone to master the new weapons. By dinner time, Sabrina had only managed to teach 50 to fly on the carpet. Granny told her there were at least another 300 waiting in line outside the mirror. Tomorrow was going to be even more exhausting. Snow approached. Looks like it's my turn. She seemed nervous. It's really simple, Sabrina said, hoping to ease her fear. You just tell her what to do and it obeys. If it's so simple, then why does it look so awkward? That's me, I think, Sabrina said. I'm not very good, and I can't seem to get it to work as well as Daphne. Even Uncle Jake says she's the best, but she's busy teaching the Scarecrow how to use a genie's ring. If you want to wait for her, I won't be offended. I think I'll stick with you, Snow said, stepping onto the rug. So, how do we get into the air? Sabrina joined her. You just ask. Cop it up. Suddenly, the rug rocketed into the air and came to a screeching halt uh, a few inches from the ceiling. Sabrina cringed. Sorry, like I said, I'm not the best driver. Perhaps it's easier if we sit, Snow suggested, easing herself down. Sabrina did the same. So, if I wanted to go down the hall, just ask. Okay, carpet, let's move. Miss White said. The rug sailed forward, dipping and bouncing along the way. Sabrina remembered that the time she and her family flew to Mexico on vacation. The plane sailed through some clouds and shook unpleasantly in the turbulence. Sabrina almost lost her lunch. Thank you for staying here to help, Snow said. I know how much you and your father would rather get out of town. It's caused a lot of fighting between my mom and dad. I have noticed. My parents are a little obnoxious, huh? Snow laughed. Don't worry. They'll work it out. I knew them before you were born. 
one look and you could see how much they adored one another. I've only seen one other couple who looked at each other the way they do. You and the prince? Sabrina asked. Snow blushed. What if I want to fly in a circle? Do I just ask again? Yep. When you're cruising along like this, it will follow your directions. But when things get crazy, like if you're being attacked, as a mind of its own. I guess you could say it wants to save its own butt just as much as, as you want to save yours. Snow explained a route she wanted to take, and the rug followed her every instruction. So you in love with the prince, why aren't you getting married? Sabrina asked. It's complicated. I've got time, Sabrina said. I have to train Ichabod Crane next, and he sweats a lot when, he, when he's nervous. I'd rather put him off as long as I can. Well, it all started about 600 years ago, Miss White said with a laugh. You see, there was a time when I was, well, pretty naive. Huh? I was an idiot. In my defense, they didn't educate women back then, back in my day. There used to be a joke in my village. The reason they were called the Dark Ages is because the woman couldn't figure out how to light the candles. Jokes weren't, wasn't really that funny back then either. Snow laughed at her own bad joke. Anyway, I coasted on my looks and didn't worry about my brain. I was royalty after all. And then, well, my mom gave me the poisoned apple to put me to sleep. I guess I had some kind of epiphany while I was sleeping because a little while after Billy kissed me and woke up, I got mad. That makes sense, Sabrina offered. No, I mean, I was mad at her for sure. But I was mad at Billy too, and the universe, and the way things was done. Snow counted off on her fingers. This guy shows up and I'm supposed to marry him just because he broke some spell? I expected my parents to pick a husband for me, but having the magical world make the decision felt even more unfair. Why couldn't I decide who I wanted to love? But even that's not what really truly bothered me. It was the realization that I couldn't take care of myself. While I was riding off into the sunset on the back of Billy's horse, I made a decision. I would never allow myself to be a victim again. So you to learn martial arts and started the Bad Apple Self-Defense School to teach other women how to fight back, Sabrina said brightly. And now you're training an army. But what does that have to do with Billy's proposal? I broke my own promise. I let myself be victimized again. Bluebeard. His name sent shivers through Sabrina. It was only days ago that the, infa that the infamous murderer had cornered Snow. Luckily, Prince Charming had appeared in the nick of time to save her. When he grabbed me and pulled me into that alley, I literally forgot all of my training. I was helpless, Miss White admitted, ashamed. You shouldn't give yourself a hard time about it, Sabrina said. He gave everyone the heebie-jeebies. I'm not everyone. I pride myself on my smarts and my right hook, but they both failed me. So I'm right back where I was 600 years ago with Billy saving my butt and expecting us to run off and get married. You're one of the bravest people I know, Sabrina said as she showed Snow how to make the carpet do a loop-de-loop. -loop. I'm not so sure that's true, Sabrina, Snow said, and until I know, I can't get married, even though I love Billy. I won't marry someone who has to take care of me. I have to prove that I can take care of myself again. I have a feeling charming will wait for you, Sabrina said with a smile. Snow smiled. That seems to be the end of this video. I'll send you later. Goodbye.